Good morning and a warm welcome to the St. Basil's Atama 915 service. My name's Alex and I'm from the Macquarie service. Uh, we'll be continuing on with the Book of Romans this week. Last week, it was a good reminder that we should be a church that's driven by grace and not by guilt and also driven by love and not by the law. Today, David, our minister, will be stepping us through Romans chapter 8 to see how liberating it is that we're now free from the law of sin and death. I'll quickly run through how today's service works. Uh, in a moment, we'll be going to sing a song together. It will be followed by Kid Spot. And then after the Kid Spot, uh, for the younger kids, there are some activity sheets you can download from the St. Basil's website. Uh, the older kids and adults will listen to the Bible reading and then we'll hear a talk from David. Uh, let's take time now to pause and reflect on how we may serve our Almighty God. So please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we humbly thank you for all your gifts so freely given, for life and health and safety, for work and rest and friendship, and for the wonder of creation. Above all, we praise you for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for your life-giving spirit and the hope of sharing in your glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, Karen is now going to lead us in worship. Can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be? That thou, my God, should die for me. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? He left his father's throne above, so free, so in. Infinite his grace, emptied himself of all but love, and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all immense and free, oh praise my God, it reaches me. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thy nine diffused a quickening ray. I woke the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and follow thee. Amazing love, how can it be? That thou, my God, shouldst die for me. No condemnation now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head, and clothed in right. Righteousness divine, bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should? 
roads die for me. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel and I'm here to do a kids song today. Do you know that anyone who's saved by Jesus is now freed from sin and can now live a way that pleases God? We don't have to be ruled by sin. In Romans chapter 8 verse 2 it says, Because of what Christ Jesus has done, you are free. You are now controlled by the law of the Holy Spirit who gives you life. The law of the Spirit frees you from the law of sin that brings death. Now, what happens if you stumble in sin? Well, if you are saved by Jesus, you can ask God to forgive you and know that he will, trusting in the great and powerful work of Jesus on the cross. And God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us to want to do the things that God wants us to do. He will change us from the inside to be more like Jesus and to help us to fight sin with God's power and not let it rule over us anymore. How wonderful is that? So now we're going to sing a new song called The Spirit's Song. I'll sing one line and you can repeat it after me. And then after that, we'll sing it all together once. I want to be like Jesus I want to live like Him I want to be more holy I want to stop all my sin Lord, thank you for your spirit I'm glad he lives within me He makes me more like Jesus He leads me and helps me to live Well, let's sing it all together. I want to be like Jesus. I want to live like Him. I want to be more holy. I want to stop all my sin. Lord, thank you for your spirit. I'm glad He lives within me. He makes me more like Jesus. He leads me and helps me to live. Do me do, do me do, do me do me do, do me do, do me do, do me do me do. Thanks for singing, everyone. Uh, we're going to spend some time reading from the Bible, and then David, our minister, will be speaking to us afterwards. Uh, before we open up the Word. Let's pray together and be reminded how great and powerful God's Word is. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for inspiring all Scripture by the Holy Spirit. And by your Spirit, help us so to hear your Holy Word, that we might be equipped for every good work through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, or you can follow us. Uh, on the verses on the screen. Romans chapter 8 Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son, in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, 
who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have made their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, our Taman Church. My name is David. I'm the minister of this church. And we'll be looking at Romans chapter 8 together. Let me pray uh, as we look at God's word together. Heavenly Father, as we look at your word this morning... We just pray that you do help us understand your word. Help us to know what it means to live by the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The ads on TV most of, most of the time are quite clever. In some ways, they are far better than the TV episodes themselves. You could fast forward all the TV shows and just watch the ads. They were able to capture the mood of the day. It gives a social commentary to the philosophy of our times. And in that environment, they were able to sell us what our hearts desires. One of the cleverest ad on TV came from the 80s. Against all the hype of low caloric artificial sweetener, CSR tried to sell unhealthy sugar. How do you sell sugar to the people? It's a bit like selling saturated pig fat to gym junkies. CSR put an ad that showed the beautiful beauty of the farm, the untouched landscape of nature, and with a soothing music, the ad came with a punchline. The natural things in the world are often the best. Sugar is natural. The artificial sweeteners are man-made. Which would you choose? It makes you want to eat sugar by the bowlful. The ad was able to capture our desire for nature and for natural things. It was clever. Natural is good, unnatural is bad. As a church, we've been studying the book of Romans. As we see over the last few weeks, well, in Romans chapter 1 to 5, Paul explained that we are all sinful and we are all declared righteous by trusting in Jesus alone. We have been justified by faith. In Romans 6 to 7, Paul answered the question, If salvation is free, what is the incentive to do good? 
His answer was, we have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? We are no longer slave to sin. We are now slave of righteousness. While Romans 6 gives us the motivation to do good, however, it does not give us the power not to sin. Therefore, in chapter 7, we will read about a struggle, struggle against sin as we try to do good. So at the end of chapter 7, we were left hanging. I know I've died to the power of sin. I know now I am slave of righteousness. However, it does not matter how hard I try, I am still unable to do good. What is the answer to this dilemma? The answer in chapter 8 is this. We live by the Spirit. So, Joe, run down from Romans 1 to chapter 8 on a PowerPoint. Chapter 1 to 2, we are all sinful. Chapter 3, we are declared righteous by trusting in Jesus. Chapter 5, the benefits of being declared righteous. Chapter 6, the motivation not to sin. We have died to sin. Chapter 7, the struggle not to sin. And chapter 8, the power not to sin. We live by the Spirit. Chapter 8 started by giving us the scope, the scope of salvation. Chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. There is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Remember the reality on chapter 7? Even though we are still Christian, we continue to struggle against sin. I do what I do not want to do. I, I don't do what I want to do. However, now, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. I will confess my sins to God and to each other, and I will be forgiven. For those of us who have tender consciences, we are sensitive to our, towards our sin. Well, this is good news. There is no condemnation. The reason is given verse 2. The principle of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. Here Paul introduces the spirit, which he will explain later on in chapter 8. The spirit of work here, notice here, is not separated from the work of Christ, as we see in verse 3. The spirit and Christ works together for our redemption. And here, the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. We have died to sin in chapter 6. We have died to a law in chapter 7. And because we have died, we have been free from sin and from the law. In verse 3 to 4, we are given this way of salvation. We were free from the law not because the law was obsolete, nor was it because the law was evil. We were free from the law because it was powerless to save us. It has been weakened by the sinful flesh. As we saw last week, the problem was not with the law. The problem was with sin. However, what the law could not do, God did by sending his one and only son in a likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. He was not in a likeness of flesh because he was truly human. He was not in a likeness of sin because Jesus was sinless. But he was in a likeness of sinful flesh. He came as a sin offering. 
in the Old Testament, the sin offering is an offering that can wipe away all the sin. And the only way that sin can be wiped away is through condemnation and death. And here Jesus took on the sin of sinful man, put on himself, and in his death, he condemned sin in his own body. And therefore, sin is wiped away. Furthermore, here there is a double exchange. This is what the theologian called double imputation. Just as Jesus took our sin on his body, condemned and died, we took on his righteous life. It was a double exchange. He took on our sin, we took on his righteous life. I gave him my rags. Jesus gave me his clean robes. I gave him all my iniquities. He gave me his perfect righteousness. Friends, if ever there was a good exchange, this was a good exchange. And because we took on his righteous life, well, we have fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law. Friends, even though we have not obeyed the law, because the righteous life of Jesus was given to us, well, we have fulfilled the law. The righteous requirements of the law were fully met in us. Not only are we declared not guilty, we are not declared righteous. When God looks upon us, well, he sees the perfect life of Jesus. In that sense, we are saints. We can walk around with our head, heads held high. Just ponder a minute. You're standing before the creator of the world. We have the perfect life of Jesus. How do we live now then? Here the answer is we live by the Spirit. Here Paul contrasted those who are of the Spirit and those who are of the flesh. Firstly, he contrasted the nature of the flesh and the nature of the Spirit, verse 5 to verse 8. Secondly, he identified those who are of the Spirit, verse 8, verse 9 to verse 11. Thirdly, he stated the obligations and the rights of those who are of the Spirit, in verse 12 to verse 17. Firstly, there's a contrast here between those of the flesh and those of the Spirit, verse 5 to verse 8. The word flesh just means your natural self. It's your basic desire. It's your natural instinct. It is who you really are. And the mindset of the person of flesh, well, is someone who's always looking forward to satisfy those desires. The mindset we read here is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Verse 7. The natural self cannot please God. Verse 8. Many of us are brought up thinking, well, the natural self is good. We believe that babies are born innocent. And we believe that deep down in our hearts, well, we are pure. We are all good at heart. Therefore, the call was to listen to our hearts. We encourage you to be true to ourselves. And therefore, we must pursue our own dreams and desires at whatever they may be. On the contrary, we do harm to ourselves if somehow we suppress, suppress those desires. And somehow we do injury to our psychology if we're not true to ourselves. Friends, that is a lie. It's a complete lie. Friends, that is not biblical. The devil has completely, completely deceived us. The natural self, well, it is evil. 
The natural self is hostile to God. Our inner desire do not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Our heart will never, never please God. See, instead of giving in to our inner desires, the fruit of the Spirit is always self-control. See, this philosophy of this age, this sort of thinking has infiltrated the mindset of many churches. One of the most famous preachers in America wrote in Facebook as a summary of a sermon, and is what she said. We must listen to our hearts. We must follow our own desires. To which a friend of mine replied, In my heart, I am a murderer. Surprisingly, he did not get any reply. That sort of mindset was also seeping to many people doing ministry. In the past, when I was trained to be a minister, the word minister just means a servant. A servant do, does what must be done. He serves. That is his duty. My duty is to do anything that will serve God's people and advance the gospel of my Lord Jesus Christ. In this world today, well, ministry is put in terms of passion. You do only what you are passionate about. You pick and choose how you want to serve, whom you serve, and the way you serve. I'm not saying there's no place for passion and desires, but they are distant second. My first place must be the needs of the person I serve. I am a servant. I must do what's good for others. In Mark 10.45, Jesus was the servant of all. He gave his life as a ransom for many. I'm pretty sure the desire of Jesus was not to go to the cross. In fact, remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, he begged, he begged his father to take the cup away from him. The cross was not a dream life of Jesus. The cross certainly was not the passion of Christ. But he was willing to serve for the good of others and for the salvation of the world. The spirit life, however, is completely different. The spirit will give us a different desire. The spirit will give us an eternal perspective. The mindset of those according to the spirit is about growing into maturity into Christ. The mindset of those of the spirit is reaching the loss for Christ. The desire there is to meet with God's people, the desire to serve others. It's not about passion, it is about service. I had a friend who loved skiing. During winter, he told me when he was growing up, he would go up to the snowy mountains on Friday night, ski the whole weekend, and uh, came back on Sunday night for school on Monday. He said when he was in the snow, the whole thing was magic. He just loved skiing. He became Christian. He stopped going to the snowy mountains. He came to church on Sunday. He joined Bible study group. He served others in church. And later on in life, he went to Bible college. As now as a missionary in Indonesia. See, the Spirit in him, the Spirit of God, gives him a different desire. The desire is to reach the loss for Christ. The mindset of the Spirit here is life and peace. God has given us a new mindset in the Spirit. And that mindset changed the direction of his life completely. Secondly, Paul identified those who are of the Spirit, verse 9 to 11. 
Paul started with the indicator. You are not of the flesh, but of the spirit. If the spirit of God lived in you, here notice here is not an imperative, it's not command. It's not even a wish, a subjunctive. Here it was a fact. Those who have the Spirit of God are those of the Spirit. And who has the Spirit? Verse 9b. It's those who belong to Christ. If you are Christian, you have the Spirit of God. Full stop. If you have the Spirit of God, you are of the Spirit and not of the flesh. The converse is true. If you deny the Spirit of God, you do not belong to Christ. The implication is crystal clear. It's not possible to belong to Christ and not have the Spirit. Again, in the past, there are those in the Christian church who support the doctrine of what we call second blessing. They argue that once you be, when you became a Christian, you do not have the Spirit of God. You need a second blessing to receive the Spirit of God into your lives. And so the Christian experience is a two-stage experience. The first stage is trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. The second stage is receiving the Spirit. Friends, there is no second blessing. Those who belong to Christ have the Spirit of God. It's only one stage. Thirdly, Paul wanted to tell us the obligations and the rights of those who belong to the Spirit. If you are the, of the Spirit, these are your obligations. What are obligations? Well, we're obligated to put to death the deeds of the body. We put to death all the desires and wants of flesh. We put to death all the selfishness and greediness and lust. And the way we put to death here is by the Spirit. Notice here, we are not putting it to death by the law. It's not more laws and laws and regulations and rules. Instead, we put it to death by the power of the Spirit. How do we put to death the misdeeds of the body by the Spirit? We give ourselves into the mindset of the Spirit. We soak ourselves, our minds, with the Spirit's words. We encourage and spur each other on towards good deeds. We give ourselves to evangelism and mission. In the language of Romans 12, we give our bodies as living sacrifices to serve God and to serve each other. See, the life of the Spirit is not a pampered life of luxury and ease. We're not those who are being fattened for the day of slaughter. It involves sacrifice and pain. There'll be heartbreak and trouble. It'll be frustrating and you lose out. And as we give ourselves to the work of the Spirit, we will not do the misdeeds of the flesh. If you try not to break the law, you end up breaking the law. But when you try to love others and to serve others, you will end up fulfilling the law. We we'll live by the Spirit. As an aside, can I encourage you to use our Bible reading plans we have in church? That's how we serve ourselves with the words of the Spirit. Can I encourage you to join Bible study group or come to CMS Summer School? This is where we spend our time with the Spirit's people. Can I encourage you to give yourself to evangelism and mission? This is how we focus our mind on the Spirit's work. We need more scripture teachers. We need help in playgroup. 
We're doing a mobile pantry to reach our community for the Lord Jesus Christ. So you don't think, how can I set myself to be comfortable? Think about how can the work of the gospel progress in this area. Don't think about playing security and safety for my life. Think about how we can burn with God's zeal in God's spirit. Don't think how can I set up my children for the future. Think about how I can grow my children with a gospel mindset. We live by the Spirit. We soak ourselves with the Spirit's works, words. We serve each other in love. We are totally involved in the Spirit's work. That's how we're led by the Spirit. And those who are led by the Spirit, they're right at this. We are truly the sons of God. Because the Spirit here is the Spirit of Sonship. And therefore, we call God Abba, Father. Furthermore, we're heirs and co-heirs with Christ. Your status before God is no longer just a forgiven sinner, nor are you just a saint. But more than that, your status before God is now you are a son of the God Most High. You are his heir. There is no higher standing. There is nothing more worthwhile. You cannot, cannot be more loved. And more than that, it is the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. He will also raise your mortal bodies to eternal life. This spirit of God well, is a spirit of life. It's a spirit of the resurrection. One day I'll die. I'll grow old. My body will decay. But this spirit will give life to my mortal bodies. God will raise me from the dead. See, the key, key to Christian living in the end it's not to listen to your heart. The key to Christian living is not even be true to yourself. The key to Christian living is to live our supernatural self. We live by the Spirit of God. We serve ourselves with the Spirit words. We meet together with the Spirit's people. We give ourselves to the Spirit's service. We burn with zeal for the Spirit's mission. And we live by the Spirit while we are put to death the misdeeds of the body. And we end up fulfilling the law of God. How do we live as Christians? We live by the power of the Spirit. Let me pray. And if I as we look at this part of the Bible, we remind a great truth. You have given us your spirit into our hearts. Help us to follow the leading of the spirit. Help us to be soaked by the spirit's words. Help us to give ourselves to the spirit's mission. Help us to follow the Spirit's prompt, prompting towards a life of service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, the Lord's Prayer is a prayer which Jesus taught his disciples and is a simple and powerful prayer we should all say together. Let us bow our heads and pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Matsumi will now lead us in congregation. Today we will pray from Romans 8 and for the COVID situation and for the church. Let's pray. Thank you that you are a gracious God and that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And because of Christ Jesus, we are no longer enslaved to the desires of the flesh. Please allow us to walk in a manner worthy of the gospel today. Help us not to walk in a way that leads to death, but to walk but to walk in the way of life that your Spirit gives gives to us because of Christ's righteousness. We believe that the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. We ask that you continue to give life to our mortal bodies by the power of your Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Guide us and set our minds on the things of the Spirit in all that we think, say and do. Please forgive us for the sins of the flesh when we fail to submit to your commands. Please give us the desire for the things that you desire. We pray now for countries affected by the COVID pandemic all over the world. We ask that your eternal hope will shine through this time of uncertainty and fear. Pray that people may realise the fact that we do not have control, that we are small and we are created beings made for a purpose bigger than ourselves, to serve and glorify the living God. Please comfort those who are suffering from sickness. We ask for mercy that the spread of the virus will be slowed and that a safe vaccine be found. Please help leaders make decisions for the greater good. Please provide help where there are people in need. Help those help those in financial hardship and those who are affected through losing work and livelihood. Please look after people and their mental health when they lose hope. Help the message of the eternal hope be spread so that many people will be saved through this time of trial. Those who are not negatively affected, please give them generous hearts and look outward to serve those around them in need. We pray especially for the state of Victoria as they shut down again. Please help the leaders to make decisions which will effectively contain the virus. Please help policymakers make quick, clear and thorough decisions and implement regulations that can be followed by different organisations effectively. Please give them foresight and put in measures that may be used in events like these, as they may become more frequent. Please help contain the transmission in Victoria so that other states may be spared another period of lockdown and suffering. Help people to act in a way which show care for the community rather than just themselves. Lord, you have said that your grace is sufficient for us and your power is made perfect in weakness. As we spend time physically away from meeting with each other, we ask that you look after each of us and hold on to us in our faith. Help us to draw near to you through your word, through prayer and through your spirit working in us. Please help us have renewed recognition of your love for us so that we might also show others love. Please give leaders in our churches wisdom in knowing how to navigate these times around how to love people and care for them, how to reach people with the message of the gospel and to grow in your knowledge, how to reach the elderly and how best to engage with the youth. Lord, we do trust that you will look after your people, so please help us to trust in you in these difficult times. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a few announcements for today. Uh, firstly, just like other weeks, uh, please join us via Zoom straight after this service for a chance to ask any questions you may have on Romans 8, uh, to catch up with others and to pray together. Uh, there will also be a breakout room for youth and from 10.30, toddlers and parents will also be able to meet online using the Zoom link in David's email this week. Uh, secondly, if you have any comments or feedback or any prayer points, um, you'd like us to pray for you about, uh, please make your way to our website and fill in the electronic feedback form there. Our church has Bible studies during the week where we can read and look more into God's Word. I may encourage you to join one of them and please let David know. And we'll also be running a Christianity Explained course. Uh, if you're interested or have friends who are interested, 
please speak to David as well. Uh, next Sunday at 12.30 on Zoom, our church will have its annual general meeting. Uh, please come and hear about plans for our church and to also support our office bearers. And finally, our uh, base camp men's conference is on uh, Saturday the 8th of August by live stream this year. It will run from 8.30 to 12.30. Please let me know if you're keen to join as we'll be trying to organise a group uh, for St. Basil's. Uh, before we end this service and meet together on Zoom, let's close this service by speaking to our amazing God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for breaking us free from the bondage of sin and death through Jesus Christ. Help us to rejoice in this amazing gift of salvation, to have you in the forefront of our minds daily, and to give thanks in all circumstances. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great morning.